Hex ecosystem is booming. Launched. Hedron, Maximus, Hakosa, Team, Petrus, Poly, Communis, Upcoming, Pull Party, Fiat, Pulse Chain, Pulse X. I want to ask on this. I just did a stream going over a bunch of different projects uh, with mm-hmm. Nate Mints, okay, Nate, Nate Stakes, and uh, we, we scrolled through Pulse Hot List, and we 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 found you know, there was some you know mostly the ones that people know they're popular that you know, there's, yeah. there's a they, they do uh, have a ranking system that's the ones near the top are a lot of the ones you know you've heard about, and you know of course Fiat and stuff's on there too. Mm-hmm. And Hedron Maximus are near the top, but I want to get your take too on on these products. Can you just say just a few words of like? maybe on each one like why why do you like these like i maybe i guess you could expound on the tweet uh, you know only got 180 yeah. characters so like why do you like these products why do you think they're good for the hex ecosystem yeah i mean you can start with hedron hedron obviously i think by design um incentivized hex staking in a really cool way and was also kind of the the first product built on hex or side you know next to hex um that you know, brought a new income stream to hex stakers, which I think is really awesome. Uh, I think Maximus was a, a, you know, obviously the introduction of, of hex stake pooling. And I think it's success really kind of headlined what we were able to do for the rest of the year. But um, also just like locking up 294 million hex for 15 years was huge. Um, and it's also got a hedron bonus as well. I think it's a 5x hedron bonus. So great exposure for long-term hex holders. Um, Icosa, I think, just expands upon Hedron, um, and I think you know, I think people will be surprised about how much hex got staked as a result of Icosa. Really driving people, whether you know, even though those people were creating HSIs to like get another token, that hex is still locked, and most of it was for 15 years. So huge net positive on on um, hex being burnt, and you know another cool innovative income stream for people in our ecosystem. Um, team and the perpetuals, I think, you know the perpetuals introduce like kind of an upgraded version of Maxi with the perpetual feature, and also offers exposure through a hex staking ladder um, in a really awesome way, maximizing yield, save it on gas. Um, and then team was kind of our first hex stake growth engine that um, we, it was kind of an innovation that needed to be born out of the perpetual innovation because one of our fears was like, these pools will be going forever. And how are we going to ensure that like 10 years from now, people are still going to be wanting to grow these pools. So team was kind of birthed from that and wanting to, you know, incentivize people to stake more hex through the pools, which is awesome. Um, Polly, you know, I think its initial, it, it definitely evolved, right? Like, um, I think its initial idea of of going after hex stakes was awesome, but it kind of transformed into something that, just based off of the competition that it was facing at the, in the um, in the auctions, I think it actually worked out to where the yield that it's earning for, in Icosa from being a hedron stake is actually going to be more than what the yield would have been for, you know, the cost that we were paying for HSIs poly um, is definitely a long-term hedron staking pool or, you know, great for, for long-term exposure because it's not going to be recycling its stake points. It's just going to be staying staked for 15 years. So I think people will be surprised by how valuable that becomes. Um, Communist, again, another, another hex staking incentive uh, product, which I'm always in favor of. And I think, they introduced they introduced game theory that based off of what they think like good practices around hex staking and around native hex staking and um, also trying to incentivize uh, uh, GA, which I think, you know, it was actually something that me and Dipcatcher talked about for a long time, but it's awesome to see somebody like execute on a cool idea. And I think that's a really cool feature. Uh, pool party kind of uh, expanding upon everything that we've done and opening the doors for people to lead their own hex stake pools and just have fun with it. And uh, I think it's going to make hex staking, um, you know, just a, a more community feel experience and allow people to um, be on- the entrepreneurs that I think a lot of people in our community want to be and to lead 
Um, fiat is definitely, um, you know, I, I've been hesitant to incorporate that into this. Um, but I do think that, uh, what Buck is doing with, with fiat does bring value to our ecosystem in offering new financial services around hex. So, um, you know, I think, I think it's really important for our community to build education around how to utilize those, uh, you know, his tools without getting wrecked, but I do think it does bring value. And then, um, yeah, pulse chain, pulse chain, pulse X, um, obviously, you know, there's just around hex staking, especially I think having a separate, having a separate chain that's lower gas, um, is a good solution, but it also opens up the door for, you know, a new narrative that, pull chain could be bigger than hex in a lot of ways. And so being able to drive traffic to hex um, is huge. And then pulse X, I think is just such an innovative Dex and a beautiful product that um, I think hex is going to benefit a lot because I think it's going to be one of the, probably the, the biggest liquidity pairs for most tokens. And so it's going to experience a lot of upside there. Well, I wanted to just, to, just on pulse X, this one too, I, I can't, again, this uh, fantastic thread, um, if we could just for a moment with PulseX, what we know as far as the tokenomics and stuff, again, mm -hmm. it's, it's being tested and we're still waiting for testnet v3 on and to see if anything's changed or and all that stuff too. But buy and burn, the yield farming, and the LP providing with the incentive token. What I don't know, is there something do we have everything we need for PulseX? Is everything there? Like what you know, what, what can you say about the tokenomics and just like is it, um, yeah, is it, is it, can it, can it be the best decks? I mean, I mean, does it really outcompete all the other ones? Uh, yeah, I think, I think we have more than enough. Um, I think, yeah, like what, what PulseX actually does with, I mean, what we're looking at right now with these single, with the single side staking, it's actually going to facilitate a lot of projects to be able to um, get attention and to launch through PulseX, which I think is huge. And so, um, one thing I think that's a huge benefit of that is the community will be able to kind of vet through the, the PulseX DAO. And this is, this is the DAO is definitely one of those things that hasn't been discussed as much, but, um, I do think with just like approval, the approval process, the people, uh, launching projects will need to be vetted by the community, um, in order to like be on this list. Um, and it's, it's a cool growth dynamic to, um, one, allow people to earn uh, whatever tokens get launched here, but also, you know, again, community being able to vet a little bit. Um, I mean, yeah, we, we've got limit orders, which I think is a really under, uh, underestimated value piece for, um, yeah, for, for a DEX that, you know, people, people are using pl like platforms like Matcha and one inch because of limit orders. So the fact that we'll be launching with that's huge. Um, I think the one thing I'm, I'm not necessarily concerned about, but I definitely feel the most like need to kind of like speak to our community is around, uh, staking LP. And I think it's called farming on, on PulseX, but I think a lot of people are going to be driving, uh, like diving into liquidity providing, uh, in order to get the incentive token. Um, and I'm a little concerned that people don't like aren't going to know like what they're doing and might like lose out there because they're chasing like a free token with the incentive token. Um, but other than that, like, I think, I mean, it's going to have a, a, a big upside for liquidity. Um, but yeah, that's probably the only thing I'm like slightly concerned about is just people because people, this community does love free tokens. I'll say that like, <laughs> you know, out of all the tokens that, you know, rich heart is building, so many people still ask about the incentive token and he's like he said it so many times he's like <laughs> care about the other stuff i'm building but you know people love free stuff and so they'll they'll dive in um you know well, when they can th there's two two different points from that too that i want to bring up it is one i mean everyone says oh it's the dump token the incentive token reward yeah it's got to have some value otherwise you're not going to be you're not going to provide lp to get it because so it's yeah. got to have 
you know, and maybe that's with like Hart's law where it's bonded to other stuff. So it has some sort of price, but we don't really know the pump minerals. Mm -hmm. And then the other part is um, what happens if everyone just starts providing they don't wreck themselves and permanent loss and just a whole big mess around that. What happens if they just, if we just have like insane amounts of LP coming from tons and tons of people, yeah. is that good for price? Is that good for the ecosystem? Like what, what is, what, what's the, what's the case of what happens with all that? Yeah. I mean, there's two, there's two theories of thought. And I think with our community, people definitely lean more towards like low liquidity is good because it can skyrocket price. Like, you know, more liquidity, obviously more stability, but it's also, you know, um, it's also more liquidity to work through to, for price to go up. But like, yeah, I mean, one thing I'm, I'm researching more and trying to understand is just like the difference between V3 and V2 pools, because um, with, with, with V2 pools, the liquidity is provided across the whole price range. Um, whereas V3, it can be, um, what's the word? Like, uh, I'm forgetting the, the word for it, but they operate a little differently. Um, so I'm not as familiar with like V2 pools. So I'm trying to learn more there, but yeah, I, I think, I think, I think it's a good thing in, in that, like, I think enough um, buy pressure, like, I don't know. I don't think there's like too much liquidity that would hold back like the price of pulse, for example. Yeah, the the low liquidity. Yeah, there's there's be a on both sides. I'm just thinking yeah. if everyone, hmm, I don't know. It's going to be very exciting to see which things we think will do really well and which mm -hmm. things or we which 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 task and, and which opportunities we think people take advantage of and then like nobody does. Yeah, and and the other way around too. Um, and then, okay, well, since Alan brought it up, instead of taking my RH wallet, whenever that happens, you think <laughs> it'll be a, another, are we sacking again? Are we locking up a bunch more hex or is it going to, it's going to be incentive token or any, have you even thought about that? I have no idea. Um, I don't, I don't really think, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I haven't heard Rich Hart say anything, so I won't try to like speculate too much. I don't think there'd really be a point for a token for the wallet, but. Yeah, I mean, if if RH does, I'd I'd happily sacrifice for it. <laughs> Be great, smart man, smart man. He tends. I just to, hope. Uh, I just hope he. Products. I just hope he builds like a MetaMask, like a a web wallet, not an app. You know, like I don't do any. Um, I don't do any crypto on my phone, so I want. Yeah, I, I'm hoping it's like a a Chrome extension like MetaMask, but. Yeah, he yeah. Talked, he I, talked about yeah. forking. Well, I mean, he said a lot of things. Where's the exchange? Huh? <laughs> I thought you were an RH Maxi. Why are you saying criticism? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, there's there's that. There's the, I'm going to have to fork MetaMask after Infura stuff, right? Um, yeah. I think it'll be something like that. I definitely don't think it'll be a mobile only. Yeah. I want to see the Hex wallet that's been finished for years. Where's that? Remember that? Yeah. yeah. Where's the Hex wallet, the EXE? I can, I can run that. <laughs> just for, yeah. not that, you know, we even need to use it or we need it, but like, that'd be cool just to see. Maybe, maybe yeah. in the RH Museum, he'll have, have a little computer and you can play with it or something. That'd be cool. Yeah. <laughs> that'd be cool. Sweet. 